All right, Lone Wolfer here, and I am in the Lone Wolfer hammock uh, doing a little relaxing before I undertake a little job that needs to be done on my 2009 XL1200N. The clutch ramp bearing or clutch throwout bearing is known to uh, wear out on these bikes, uh, especially if you are uh, heavy on your clutch. Uh, I utilize my clutch a ton. Uh, so these bearings are known to not only wear out, but uh, basically disintegrate inside of the primary. Uh, you don't actually need to take the primary cover off. You can do it actually with just a derby cover removed. And I am actually gonna show you how to do that. Uh, here is the product bag from Harley Davidson. Uh, these are like $10. I think it was $9.95 for this guy. Uh, look like that. Pretty simple little bearings. Um, if you don't have a Harley dealership near you, Amazon does have these uh, on there as a two pack. I think they're like 15, 16 bucks or something like that. Um, I have a Harley dealership within 30 miles. Actually, I've got two of them, Brothers and uh, Mike's Famous. Of them. Uh, so I don't have a reason to really order it and not just get it immediately. They have these in the stock every time I go. Um, if they don't, probably a couple days. Uh, if you want to order from Amazon, I'm gonna put the link down below for those. Uh, it comes in a two pack. Uh, but if you have an XL1200 or an XL883, this is the same part. And uh, it is uh, really annoying when they go. Uh, basically, the symptoms are um, what feels like an unadjusted clutch. And you start to um, lose the ability to find neutral. Uh, shifting from gear to gear becomes difficult because the clutch adjustment actually is completely out because the bearing is failing and you are unable to actually um, utilize the um, uh, clutch adjustment uh, screw that's in there because the bearing is actually wrapped around that screw and it actually helps hold the whole thing. And you'll see when I go through the steps um, in the following series. Uh, I am not gonna show you how to put it back in, just follow the steps the opposite way, guys. Pretty simple. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an easy job. It's simple, straightforward. I will show you the tools that you need in the video, um, but I'll list them right here. You need um, a Torx head uh, bit, I think it's T27. Uh, you need uh, a pair of pliers, uh, preferably needle nose. Uh, you need uh, snap ring pliers. I hate snap rings so much. Um, if you have a uh, bearing race remover, you're gonna need one of those. If not, a vise and a hammer will actually do the trick in this job. Um, you do not need to grease these bearings as they are inside the clutch. So they are being uh, lubed as the clutch you know, goes around. Um, that's about it, guys. Um, you know, Maybe a catch basin or a, a towel to put on the ground just in case you spill any um, you know, fluid from the primary. Uh, but that's about it. All right, let's get into this sucker. First thing that's got to happen, you got to break the clutch cable down. On the Sportsters, typically they're 9 16 and 1 half. If your clutch handle is completely free, that means the clutch cable is completely free. All right, next thing that's gonna come off is the derby cover. Uh, my derby cover is held on by six uh, Torx 27 heads. And I actually took the uh, foot peg mount off completely already to access the derby cover. Drag or basin underneath. While doing this, will not allow you to so don't lose your bolts. But in case any fluid comes out, it won't be all over the floor. All right, this is your um, clutch ramp and. On the end here, you have the retaining nut and spring that holds it in place. What's gotta happen is this um, 
adjustment screw needs to be loosened so that we can get this whole ramp out. This you can actually let hang here for a moment and just give it a once over, make sure all the ball bearings are there in place so they don't fall out. There should be three of them. And that looks like it's working just fine. So inside here is where your throwout bearing is. It's actually part of this uh, adjustment screw unit here. Mine does not have excessive play in it, uh, so it doesn't seem to need to be replaced, but it's been about 25,000 miles, so I'm gonna do it anyway. The adjustment screw and throwout bearing are held in by a snap ring, so we gotta get that sucker out of there. I hate snap rings. This is easier if you actually have a bearing press. I don't, but you can grab a hammer and just tap this guy out. And there, there's that. There's actually one more snap ring there holding this part together. So I'm gonna go take that apart. A lot of times when you uh, end up in this position, these will have actually already fallen apart. Um, right now I'm lucky and this is in such good shape that it is in one piece. So I can just pull that off, put the old one in there, then we got to get this in here. A lot of times, just slide it right in. Most likely that's not going to be the case. But I got lucky. Pressed it in there with my fingers. Didn't need a press. Didn't use a vise. Didn't need to use a hammer either. All right, we have to uh, next reseat the adjustment screw. So we have to put the adjustment nut back on the adjustment screw. Get it back inside of the clutch ramp, which is easier said than done. There we go. Until we seat. Not until it's tight, but just until we seat. And then we come back one quarter of a turn. You don't want that too tight because you don't want this engaged all the time. You will wear out that bearing way too quick. So we go until we seat. One quarter back. One more time. Till we seat. One quarter back. So make sure that before you adjust your clutch cable that it's actually seating back in place. Don't forget your retaining nut and spring.
All right, uh, thank God that is over with. Uh, always uh, nice to be done with a job. Uh, it's, as you can see, it's not hard. Uh, a little time consuming, uh, especially if it's your first time doing it. Uh, it takes me about 20 minutes or so to do it. Uh, I've done it like three times now. Um, I want to thank the amazing uh, being Claire Marie, uh, the fiance, for lending her hands during this. Uh, an extra set of hands filming or uh, holding a wrench, something that's always extremely appreciated. Uh, but yeah, so it took the bike for a test ride, didn't die. Uh, always a plus uh, when you replace something and you take it out and nothing fails. Um, yeah, picking my nose, uh, scratching my nose. Ah, God, yeah, allergies suck. Um, yeah, but uh, pretty dope getting that done uh, before it failed. Last two times it failed. Uh, one time I got uh, stranded out in the middle of East Bumfuck, Connecticut. Uh, the second time I was uh, coming home from the Hard Times Chopper Show up in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, I had to sit at the police station there in Worcester for about three hours waiting for my ride. Um, but yeah, this time I wanted to get it done beforehand. Uh, preventative maintenance, um, knowing that it's going to fail and understanding why it fails is, uh, you know, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good to know. Um, so I'm hoping that maybe this video helps out a bunch of people who ride XLs. Uh, cause again, you know, the XL 1200 and 83 both have these bearings in there for multiple years. Uh, this one actually says, uh, you know, 12 through 17. Mine is an 09. That's the same one. Uh, you know, just check with your Harley dealer. Uh, do some research online. The HD forum is a great place to find information like this or for other preventative measures you can take for these bikes. Hope you guys are having a great one and getting some riding in. I am going to uh, do a bit more relaxing the lone wolf or hammock and probably take a nap. Yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments about uh, this video or need uh, any other pointers on uh, the XLs, uh, you know, I can point you in the right direction or, or let you know what needs to get done as I have uh, been through pretty much everything with this sucker. Uh, love this bike um, and it's totally worth the time spent wrenching. All right, guys, rock on.